Now, I say we talk about expensive paper a lot, but this is a whole new level. It doesn't get richer than this, guys. These books are outrageous. Comics have never been selling like they have in the last two years, and we have the numbers to prove it. Hit the like, slap the subscribe. We're talking blue chip keys, silver age keys, golden age keys, million dollar club. You know we had to get the golden age guru on the mic. Excited to be here, guys. This ain't no fight club. This is, like you said, the upper echelon of prices for some unbelievable books. And at the list, at number eight, Fantastic Four number one from 1961. Stan Lee, Jack Kirby goodness, the first Marvel family, the beginning of the Marvel age. Oh, man, this book saved Marvel's butt. They were about to shut the doors, but here we go. The first appearance of the Fantastic Four, a well-loved book, an underappreciated book for a very, very long time due to some very crappy movies. So it got what it deserved because nobody cared. And we have a major sale to report on this month, April 2022, a 9.2 hitting $1.5 million. And I remember hitting those con floors less than a decade ago, chatting with you, scoffing at $2,000 prices for low-grade copies, how I wish I had a time machine. I missed that on this book. I kind of poo-pooed it for way too long. But let's talk about some of the numbers. There are three nine twos, but there are five higher than that with a nine six on the census. Important information to consider because if any one of these copies comes out in this marketplace right now in this environment, it's likely that that will change the positioning that they currently are on our list. Fantastic for maybe at the bottom, but it takes one sale to change that. This shocked me. At number seven is Detective Comics number 27. First appearance of Batman. First appearance of Commissioner Gordon yet still at number seven only. This book doesn't come up often, very scarce, and the highest publicly recorded sale happened in 2020, November, for $1.5 million for a 7.0. However, that's the same amount of money that we just quoted FF1 hitting, but it's higher on our list for good reason, because if this book came out in this market, it would eclipse the 1.5 FF sale. Especially since we've seen this book clear the 1 million marker three other times, one of which was just January of this year where we saw 4.5 sell for $1,140,000. Now let's talk about the other books on this census. There are five higher grades than the 70 with the 9.2 being the highest graded currently. Now let's talk about something really quick. There is a raw book, allegedly, an Allentown pedigree, okay, that is not graded. And I mentioned that because it's going to tie into another huge, massive book on this list. So stay tuned for that. If you enjoy this type of information, you got to utilize the code TOM101 on the best comic app in existence. It's categories like these, the Million Dollar Club. When there is a trailer that drops like Thor Love and Thunder, the keys that are spiking are categorized. You get key alerts alerting you of industry shaking news. Support what we do and better your hunt. Stay up on this rapidly moving industry. And let's move on to the next one on the list. At number six, we have Batman number one from 1940. We're going back to back bats, and this is not just any Batman number one. It is an exceptional copy, amazing colors, and again, first appearance of the Joker and first appearance of the Catwoman. We're not just talking about a first issue in his own title. We're talking about major players in his own universe. We have a Batman one that sold for over a million dollars three different times with the record high being set by a 9.4, selling for $2,220,000. Hot damn comic fam. And even more spectacular is that the fact that this is not a pedigree. Usually the highest graded copies, especially for Golden Age, are pedigrees. Can we explain what a pedigree is real quick, just in case? If you're not familiar with the term, I'm going to keep it super simple. It's a recognized collection by CGC. Okay, something of exceptional status. So it's going to have extremely high grades and some extremely important books in it. And now at the list at number five, we have Marvel Comics number one from 1939. Timely comics that would eventually become Marvel Comics started their business with this book. Oh, how I love this book. One what of your a, favorites, yeah? Absolutely. I, I, I dream of the day when I will own it, and I'm hoping it will happen. Cross your fingers, dude. It's going to be tough to find. It will be. First appearance of Human Torch. Second appearance of Submariner. And by the way, if you read the Submariner story, you might not like him as he literally kills people in some ruthless ways. He was hardcore, dude. He was very hardcore. 
But let's talk more about this book. This book you and I both saw originally as a 9.0 in Comic-Con. We got to touch it, dude. We did. And now, if we touch it, it's a 9.2. So what happened? It had to have been broken out of that case, pressed, maybe cleaned up a little bit, and got the 9.2? He did hint at us that it was a beautiful 9.0. So it's hard because it's it's the pay copy. Let's explain what the pay copy is. This is a very special book. Yeah, because the pay copy was notes put on the comic by the publisher. In pencil. In pencil of how much they paid towards the artist for the book. So it's got like notes all over scribbled on it. And I guess really for the artwork of the book, not for the book itself, obviously. Right. So it's not a pretty copy if you ask me. But it's very important. But it is significant. For the history of the hobby. It's probably why in March of this year, it went for $2.42 million. Hot damn. Again, if it was prettier, I think it would go for more. You know what? If you want to wait for a higher graded copy, you're going to have to wait a long time because this is the only 9.2 on the census and there's only one higher and it's a 9.4 Windy City pedigree. Possibly one of the earliest speculators in all of comics. (laughs) So true. Okay, this person bought nothing but number one issues. In fact, 2,000 of them, spending from the 30s to the 1960s. This pedigree had a Cap one, a Flash one, a Captain Marvel one, All Winners one, Daring Mystery one, a Wiz one. This right here is one of only four pedigrees to contain only issue number ones. This is the book that I go back and forth with on the Marvel Comics one of which I want more. Captain America, number one, at number four on this list. 1941, first appearance and origin of Captain America. This right here is one of my grails I hope to own one day, and it's getting further and further out of reach. There's not very many on the census. However, we saw a 9.4 record breaker this very month in April, selling for $3,120,000. And it's also because it's the first appearance of Bucky Barnes, which is way more important. That's right. Only two 9.4s in existence. But you know what? There is a 9.8 graded copy. Hot damn. We hinted at the Allentown pedigree. And here we go. This is a 9A copy for Captain America Comics number one. Okay. It's in a very safe place. The person who owns this also happens to own most of every timely in its highest grade possible. Wow. Now, how did we get these 135 comics? By the mother of the year. You know how your mom threw away your stuff? This mom did not. She kept all the artwork from the son drawing hearts and valentines and birthday cards. And guess what else she kept? She kept his comics. That's right. And she wasn't only keeping them storage in the closet for years. She had to have been pressing and dry cleaning because hot damn, these were high grade. She dusted them. (laughs) She dusted them, but you know what? She also dusted a Tech 27, a Marvel Comics 1, a Cap 1, a Batman 1. These are collections that people dream about finding. Oh, dreaming's a wonderful thing. Except when you're having nightmares while you're asleep, because I sold two AF-15s early last year and regretted it one month later. That's right, number three on the list. We have Amazing Spider-Man's origin, first appearance, the first appearance of Aunt May, Uncle Ben, Amazing Fantasy 15, debuting in 1962. Oh, Kirby crushed this cover, like he did so many times. Absolutely, and in September 2021, this book became the most expensive comic book to have ever sold. It was a 9.6. There is no higher graded copy of this book, and it went for $3.6 million. Obviously, number three of this list, we know that 3.6 has now been beaten, but... This book sold for $1.1 million in 2011. So to over triple, I think somebody got a great deal on this book as it's the highest and most exceptional copy of one of the most important books in all of comics. If you enjoy this comic book theme content and want to support the show, hit the like, slap the subscribe. But if you want to give me an excuse to send you funny books every month, hit the link in the description and go to comictom101.com. Every single box this month, we're getting you ready for Boys Season 3, which debuts in June. We're sending out a copy of Boys Number 7 from the original run, a reprint featuring the first appearance Stormfront was ever in comic books with a Starlight Ben Temple Smith cover. We have three different versions all going out at random. Join the community. And Jeff, hit him with number two. Coming at number two is a book that you would not assume to be here. 
Action Comics number one. Yeah, imagine how many people left thinking, oh, I know Action 1 will be at the list at number one. That's why you can't leave too early. It's at number two with a Monster High raw sale. This is the book that started comics in theory. Okay, this began the golden age, began superhero comics, first appearance of Superman, June 1938, first appearance of Lois Lane, first appearance of others, and on and on and on and on. And we have an Edgar Church copy that is known to exist. Another pedigree! This pedigree is so prolific, it goes by two names, either the Edgar Church or the Mile High due to Chuck Rosansky, who discovered this collection in 1977. But let's talk about it. It got put together from 1937 to 1957. 20 years there of amassed books and put together the largest pedigree in existence. So this book is known to exist, a raw copy of Action Comics number one, and it hasn't been seen online. It's something that you hear through the dealer tables, friends of dealers who have seen it, who've heard about it, the elusive book that may or may not grade as high as I've heard in my life as much as a 9.6. This story of this book is what fables are written about. This is like a unicorn. It's supposedly owned by somebody who goes by the name of the dentist. Like legit comic fam. I've heard this name my whole life. The dentist owns some crazy high grade comics. Allegedly action comics, all raw mile high one through 28. Major. Major. The Allentown pedigree that we discussed of detective comics 27, which is allegedly in a 9.4. Crazy to think about the amount of value that this one collector owns. Well, a lot of people have been waiting to see this comic come to the market. And Key Collector, through a vetted source, was able to confirm a private sale of this book in December 2021 of $4.5 million. Jeff, I have to hear your thoughts about this. It's extremely hard for me to believe that this happened. Okay, knowing where the book is. Knowing that the price of $4.5 million is extremely low for what that book should go for, and knowing that it's in the hands of a collector who is constantly being offered and hounded to purchase this book from them to not have an idea of what the value truly is, just doesn't make any sense to me. So then it leads me to ponder, to speculate that maybe the book wasn't as high grade as many believed over the last three decades, or... Maybe this private sale is part of a larger sale because I would assume that any collector would get this graded before deciding to sell it in the market, especially during the biggest comic boom in American history. If we see this come to market over this next year, if we find an action one graded at above a 9.2, it's very likely that it's this copy. I'm not going to say something couldn't have happened. This could be part cash, part trade. Who knows, right? But when an 8.5 sells last year for $3.25 million, I just think there's more to this story. Speaking of graded action ones, there are two 8.5s in existence and only two higher than that, and the highest being a 9.0. Hit the like, slap the subscribe. We're now taking it to the number one highest selling collectible comic book in the world. Debuting in 1939, we have the most glorious Beautiful yellow cover. It's captivating. Superman, number one. Oh, these yellows are so sweet. We saw that with the Batman one. And now this Superman one as well. Fantastic looking book. Extremely striking cover. Okay, this is him in his own title for the very first time. And reprints the stories from Action Comics number one. So it's kind of a reprint, but it is a grail nonetheless. An Edgar Church pedigree. Extremely coveted and always sells very strong, but this copy is an 8.0, which was the highest graded at the time. Ooh, at the time. Remember that. We're going to get into it because it sold for $5.3 million this year. So here's where the landscape changes in the last three months. There were two 8.0s tied for the highest, but now there's only one 8.0 and a lone 8.5 that just took over the number one spot. Whoa, Jeff, you have to explain because this right here, the Edgar Church copy was one of the two 8.0s in existence. One has been removed from the census and an 8.5 has been added. Explain. This is what it means. There were two 8.0s. Now there's one because one of those 8.0s was most likely upgraded 
Now, I talked to a friend of mine who had that church in his hand and said it was an absolutely gorgeous book. And it was an older label. I'm not talking original, but several plus years old at this point. So there is a chance and makes more sense considering that it was just in the last few months that that was the copy that might have gone up to that 8.5. The Edgar Church copy, the mile high copy. What are the odds that this would come to the market after so long and then see a sudden change to the census if it wasn't the same one? We could be wrong. We got to know your thoughts in the comment section below because when you tally up these eight record breakers, the total value of these eight monster key books is over $24 million hot damn. As always, geek responsibly. Enough said. Join myself and this guy on the best new app to buy and sell collectibles, Whatnot, every Wednesday. That's right. We're there with the entire crew for eight hours straight of selling. We start these auctions at only $1, and they go for as short as 15 seconds. Link in the description. Follow myself. Follow the Golden Age Guru on Whatnot and on Instagram. I'll put his info in the description. And take a look at these other videos. We made them for you. 